Dear, uh, dear Cargill, um, this is a letter from Willis Eakin, president of the Minnesota Farmers Union. And the letter was a response uh, to an article that I saw in the March 1st Sunday uh, paper, St. Paul Pioneer Press and Dispatch, that identified that uh, Cargill had the highest profits in the past 12 years during the year 1986. And so I first want to congratulate uh, your company on your economic success story of 1986. And according to the article, uh, this, this meant that it was a very, very good year, a very, very profitable year for your company. And for someone representing uh, Minnesota and farmers uh, in our farm organization, Minnesota Farmers Union, uh, we find uh, this success story coming on a year when our farmers were, dis were suffering disastrous prices and disastrous economic conditions in not only our farms but our rural communities throughout this state and throughout the United States and indeed throughout the world. How is it that a large international grain corporation, uh, agricultural corporation, can have such a contrasting year with what American and, 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 and you know, world farmers have had around the world in terms of the profits shared in the production and distribution of food. I understand that uh, Mr. Stuart Beard, who is uh, one of your company spokespersons, refused to disclose in the article some of the reasons of why you had these profits. And these profits certainly were generated during a year when uh, farm prices in the United States and throughout the world would decline rather dramatically. Not only had our prices declined, but also the volume of trade had declined. The United States suffered uh, some serious, serious declines in the amount of exports that we were able to generate this past year in grain trade. Now we have to assume that a company like yours uh, makes its profit first on volume and then second on the, on the spread that they get between what they pay the producer of food and uh, the amount that they receive from whoever it is they sell that product to. And uh, so when you see these kinds of uh, profits being made on a very low volume year, year leads uh, one to have some serious questions about how indeed were these profits generated. I think uh, even further uh, in terms of why these questions need to be answered is that uh, with the passage of the 1985 Farm Bill in the United States Congress and signed by the President, uh, many of us are beginning to believe more and more that the major benefactors under that uh, farm legislation were not our American farmers, were not uh, producers around the world, but were the international grain handlers that uh, benefit from some of the overproduction that uh, is a result of that 1985 farm bill. Uh, certainly one of the major costs in that farm bill are the storage costs that are incurred to the U.S. taxpayers by government-owned grain being placed in private storage facilities around the country and private individuals and companies then receiving taxpayers' dollars to provide this service to the government. It's our understanding that your company is very much involved in the grain storage commodity program uh, providing a service to the U.S. government from which you receive taxpayers' dollars in payment of that service. I think uh, it is only fair that uh, we as American taxpayers should know how many dollars of profit were generated by your organization uh, from the U.S. tax treasury. Also as part of that 85 farm program, there was a provision that allowed for the federal government to begin issuing a new paper trading document called a certificate, pick certificate. And with the issuance of these PIC certificates, it's allowed the federal government to begin dumping, if you will, U.S. held grain, U.S. government-owned grain, into the marketplace. It's our understanding that uh, the grain trade has been able to generate a major amount of profit on the buying and selling of these commodity certificates, again being a government instrument issued by the federal government. And so based on just these two factors that are part of the 1985 Farm Bill, uh, I would just call on your company to, even though we understand you are a private company that are not required by law to make these public disclosures on how you earn your dollars, uh, where your profits come from, because of the appearance at least that a good share of that profit may have been generated by a collection of American taxpayer dollars, that you would disclose to the American farmer and to the American public at least that part of the profit picture that came from the American taxpayers. 
So again, in closing, I uh, am pleased that uh, you um, uh, were one of the few that uh, were able to generate these kinds of profits uh, in this year of 1986. It's our hope that as part of this, inter this total marketing picture, this total agricultural picture, this picture that takes food from the farmlands of the United States and distributes it to the needy and to the uh, marketplace throughout the world, that uh, you would feel uh, an obligation to share with us your success story so that we can all begin to appreciate uh, how this whole picture of producing and distributing food, food works around the world. Sincerely, Willis Eakin.